Okay, board members, it's 5 3. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Our first item is our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Under God, indivisible, justice for all. Mr. Vice Chair, please read our mission statement. The mission of the Marshall Public School District is to educate, support, and prepare all learners for success. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. All second. Any additions? Very none. Please vote. It is approved. Under our presentation, summer school and targeted services update. Oh, thanks for having me back again. <laughs> so I decided to try something different tonight. So I hope you're okay with um, being a little interactive with me. Um, I decided to use a different presentation tool called Nearpod. Um, this is something that was introduced to our staff this last year too with. Um, um, pandemic and COVID and virtual learning. Um, some of the students maybe have used it before then, but last year a lot of staff kind of took it on and, and started using it. So I decided I was going to try to use it for a presentation tonight. Um, I believe you all have it on your computer, at least the um, website, and you need a code. You're going to join me as a student tonight. Hold on one second. So I have it open on each of your computers. It should be in your browser and second tab. Okay, click on Go back. This is 101 computer for us. Really challenging. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get to see what it was like for the students and staff this year. <laughs> and then you'll um, as Trish has it up over on the screen, there's a little box that says enter code for students. And your code is X, as an X ray, 7 E, as in John, and V, as in Victor. I don't think it matters. X. E, J, Z. And then it's going to ask you to enter your name. You can just put a first name and move on. Or a nickname or anybody. You can be anybody tonight. <laughs> Like I said, I wanted to use this tool. Um, there's going to be a few questions that you're going to be asked to participate with um, as part of the process. So just bear with me. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about summer school, our targeted services program. And um, with summer school, we also have the credit recovery piece. So before I get too far, I have a quiz for you. Or poll. Um, the first one is how many different summer school options does MPS have for students in grades K through 12? Well, I hope I don't have it wrong. So. <laughs> the nice thing about this um, program is while you're answering, it's showing me who's answered and hasn't answered, and it's tallying it for me. So on the back side of it, the teachers are seeing that the students are staying engaged. Um, or staff, use it for staff. All right, so how many different summer school options does MPS have? Okay. 
We actually have our three programs that we really look at. We have targeted services, that's our rising first grade through eighth grade. We have credit recovery at the high school level. And we also have ESY, um, that is through like IEP programming. So we have these three programs. For me specifically with targeted services and credit recovery, that's what I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about tonight. So first targeted services. Um, we really focus on, like I said, the rising first grade through eighth grade. Um, typically, in most years, we run two sessions. Last year, um, we really got thrown for a loop, so we ran one longer session. Um, we decided to go back to our two sessions this year. We'll have one that will run June 14th to July 2nd, and then we'll have a second one that will run July 12th through the 30th. Um, these programs will run Monday through Thursday from 8 to 1. And this year, as we started looking at the numbers with how many teachers have signed up to teach, we're gonna serve approximately 160 kids in our first through eighth grade program, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. <laughs> this year, we're gonna try something new with our first through fourth grade um, program. Uh, we're gonna look at doing a summer camp model. Um, this model was brought to us by uh, the teacher, uh, Jessica Novasen, who worked at, in Colorado. And they did a summer program with this camp model. So she brought it to um, Jeremy and Beth last year and we've kind of started toying with how can we make this work here. So this year we're diving in and we're gonna try it. And what it's gonna look like is those first through fourth graders are gonna rotate through different activities and sessions throughout each of their day. They'll have, um, we'll have two themes, one for each session. Um, and I might be jumping ahead of myself, so this might be on the next slide. So I'm gonna just also quickly say that we uh, have fifth through eighth grade um with the exploration opportunities they're going to have a 30 minute exploration opportunity i did jump ahead so here is kind of like i said first year of our summer camp model our two themes that we're really looking at this year um, one for each session our first session is we want to talk to our students and our um introduce them to our community a lot of the students that are referred to our program um are sometimes based out of our el program and so we really want them to be aware of our community and so that's our first theme in the summer. And then we're gonna do sports of all sorts. All kids seem to like to do activities and have fun. So we're gonna tie in a theme of sports of all sorts. We're gonna focus in math, reading, social, emotional. Those are kind of directed to us by the state. But then we're also gonna have STEM and art or um, kind of like a craft activity. They'll do some writing. And then we're hoping to find connections to a guest speaker and some mini field trips around the area really bringing them to see what Marshall has to offer. So it's called a collaboration board. And this is where I would like for you to um, help me out a little bit. You guys have been in the community for a very long time. So could you write down or jot down some ideas that you have about these two themes and ideas of who we might contact or places we might go for field trips? A little your thoughts box that you could Just post each one or just write a whole list? Whatever you want to do. Oh, it'll, it'll come up, whatever. Yep. So as you can see on, on the screen that Trisha has, even though she's in the, the kid view, um, it's going to pop up and it's going to show me your ideas. And so this is a great tool to use in the classroom for connecting with kids' engagement. Um, some of the ideas that we had talked about at the beginning of, of the whole camp model idea, um, we talked about our library, the YMCA, some of those like ones that you will probably always think of. And so we thought, hey, let's let's ask other people what ideas they have. Um, other speakers that were other people we visited with, they talked about even bringing in like the local DNR. Maybe they can talk about things in our area. We kind of want the whole our community theme to be businesses, um, people, jobs, plants, food, the whole everything. Like what do we see in our area um, or in our community? So we really want that one to be really everything about Marshall and Southwest Minnesota. The sports of all sorts, um, like I said, is all about bringing in the fun and the activities for our students. So I will be able to keep this list and it'll help me with the planning when I meet with our teachers. We'll meet on April 29th to discuss a little bit more about that camp model. And I can share some of the ideas that you have shared with us today. So thank you. There are really awesome ideas up there. 
Jeremy, it looks like we might be coming to your office. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan, huh? <laughs> All right. For fifth through eighth graders, um, our fifth and sixth grade classes will be focusing on math, science, and language arts this year. We'll also include um, a little bit of social studies in there. And then they'll have some social emotional learning and exploration. I'll talk about explorations in a minute. Seventh and eighth grade, we're really going to focus on that math and language arts piece, and then they'll have some time for social emotional. Again, those are the big three that the state really puts out to us is math, reading, social emotional. Um, explorations, we were trying to find a way to kind of bring in the idea of fun activity team building with our students. And so we came up with this idea of explorations. We were going to do it last year, everything changed last year. So we wanted to bring it back this year. It's going to be a 30 minute session to build relationships and work on collaborations with students and their teachers. The idea is for staff to come up with activities to engage students each day in areas of teamwork, collaboration, creation, and students can even help design these activities as well. And so here's your turn. Ideas would you have for explorations? I can give you a few hints. We talked about um, maybe bringing in some yard games like bocce ball or beanbag and teach them that as they're working to, with a team and to collaborate. Um, we also had different activities like um, if a teacher is really good at painting, we could get some supplies and they could do a painting activity, but just a way to build and connect with the students in their class. Um, they'll have the same kids for the um, 12 days or each session, they'll have the same kids. So they'll really build that bond with them. So then as they come back to school in the fall, they'll know this teacher and have a connection with the teacher really well. Triggered more brain power. Finish typing quick. I really appreciate these ideas. It'll help also kickstart staff ideas too. So, all right, moving on. We're also focused on having a beginner's EL um, class this year. This will be with our fifth through eighth graders. Um, they're really going to connect to the themes of our camp model in the first through fourth grade. Um, our teacher with that will be Samantha Downey. And she's going to pair up with our um, first through fourth graders to connect on those themes. Um, students will still have the social emotional time as well as the exploration time, but Sam's going to work hard to bring in that theme of our community and the theme of sports of all sorts. Um, again, a big focus of their study is going to be on learning and bridging our vocabulary um, to their academic and um, the school world. So she's really going to try to bring them into the classroom and talk a lot about what school is like um, because there are there are newer to country students. So. What do you expect in that group? Um, and for this group, we wanted to keep it lower. Um, Sam actually got a list of all of the students that are coming rising into fifth grade, so current fourth graders, and then anybody who's already at the middle school. Um, so she created that list on that need, and I think we're at about 15 students for that class. We don't want it to get too big right. so that she can't help all of them, but she felt that that was a really good number she could work with. What are the, where are the sites going to be? Um, for targeted services for the first through eighth grade program, it's going to be here at the middle school this year. Middle school, okay. Yep. Then our credit recovery program, this will be at the high school this year. Uh, the credit recovery will run June 14th to July 9th. It is a Monday through Friday program, which goes from 8 to 2.30. Currently, our counselors are working to refer students um, that are behind in credits and what courses they need. It's kind of a, it's a long, a long process that we kind of put together really quickly, it seems like. Um, we have to wait to see how kids do in their classes, obviously, to see what they need to be referred for. 
So the counselors have been helping me create a, a spreadsheet of students that need courses. Um, currently, we have six, uh, six staff members signed up to teach this program. Um, we're hoping to add two more into it just so we can get more kids into the program. Um, and we are looking at having a ninth grade section to support credits as they need it moving into high school. Um, and we look at, in the past, we've done academic strategies to help them as they prepare for high school. And then oftentimes we would add in a fact class. We are looking at having the fact class and possibly another class that would help them earn a credit towards um, one of our local credit requirements of consumer um, awareness or, um, oh, what's the other one? I just forgot. Um, possibly help with those numbers being so big going into the high school. Um, we know that we can help support uh, students get some of those to get some of those classes that they might not get just because we have so many numbers. Um, and for this, we do use our ingenuity program um, for our 10th through 12th graders. The ninth graders, the rising ninth graders, um, we try to do hands-on stuff for them to, to keep them going and with facts. Um, we'll do some cooking and some of that. Um, and possibly, like I said, health or consumer awareness class. Questions? Are these programs, um, are they all teacher referred or is it any student who may or a parent who may feel their student needs this extra? extra? For our targeted services, it's a teacher referral based program, um, but parents have the right to accept or deny or pass on the opportunity. Um, we start there with our targeted services. Um, we sometimes have parents that will reach out to their teachers and say, hey, I really like this opportunity for my child. If the need is there, um, one of the things, just because the, the, the number of limit is so, when you hear 160, that's great, but really when we break them down by grade level, um, so at the middle school, especially, we start to prioritize based on how they're doing in all of their academic areas. We look at their NWA scores, their MCA scores, and they get a number based on how they are performing in those to prioritize. Um, teachers right now give us a list of anywhere from 50 to 60 kids per grade level. And then Emily, Carol, and I sit down and we work on that prioritizing based on um, the teacher's mm -hmm. referral. They get so many points for a teacher referral, so many points for how they performed on NWAs, MCAs, and then that number shifts them around on that, that chart. Are you expecting an uptick due to this last year and the COVID effect in the... We do have more students on our referral list this year than last year, and I don't know if that, like last year because we were doing a virtual model, I don't know. Um, the hard thing that we're having, and I'll be really honest, is we need the staff to be able to run the program. Yeah. So when I don't have you know, if I have 20 staff sign up, great. I can fill those classrooms with anywhere to 15 to 18 kids, depending on the grade level. Um, so know, would we have the capacity to do that if we had teachers, both from a, yep. a funding standpoint and a student need standpoint? So we get an additional 0 0.2 funding for every kid um, that we can claim up to. So when we look at the hours that we're bringing them back in, we can claim up to an additional 0.2. Um, for this kid, the kids that are referred. Um, the high school credit recovery piece, um, it is the, the counselors are referring, but we also open it up and we send information out to area schools as well. So in some cases, we might have kids that come in um, because their parent is like, hey, my kid's really behind, they need to get credit. We want them to graduate. So the credit recovery one works just a little bit different than the targeted services one. The hard part is finding enough teachers. Yes. So have you explored ways that we can more teachers, raise more funds, incentives, or? Um, I guess we haven't talked a lot about like incentives. <laughs> um, you know, we, we do, we reach out to teachers, we reach out to teachers who have done it in the past, asking if they're willing to even like split a session or do, um, you know, they don't want to give up all their summers either. So do you want to do one session or the other? We do have a few teachers from out of district that come in. Um, we reached out to them as well from the past to see if anybody's been, if anybody's interested. Um, this year has taken a toll. <laughs> a lot of teachers, that's the big results or the big response we're getting is like, I just need a break. And so um, we're very fortunate we're able to have the seven sections of first through fourth grade this year and the um, six sections in 5-8 plus our <clears throat> social emotional and our EL. Um, I, I think that that's, that's that's a nice number. Um, it would be nice to get more. I would love to have yeah, it. Yeah, we couldn't 
take care of the kids that those are the kids that really need to be taught up. So any thought of like what do we think we're teaching there we go? Who's the pre I mean college kids that could come in and help? Um, to be a teacher in the program, they do have to have the, the teaching license to teach the summer school program. Um, it would be nice if we could maybe wiggle that a little bit, but it's it's a requirement by the state as well. Um, yes, I'm. We we reach out to teachers individually. Um, we because if they're to, not caught up here in the summertime, they're going to start off behind already. They're going to be further behind. So I think it's pretty important to figure out. And in that in that priority piece too, where we set the priorities of the students, we are looking at that. Which ones really struggled with last year? And we know there are a lot of kids that really struggled with last year. As they're processed through this year, um, are they not making the gains that we expected? And we're looking at those things to try to put them up higher on the priority list to ensure that they're getting in. Um, right now, it's at about two <coughs> sessions or two sections per grade level. But with the models, they'll be mixed just based on the camp model. So I just agreed wholeheartedly. We have to keep working to get more teachers invested in, in teaching our summer school program. And also understand the burnout based upon what they've had to do. You know, some people are just saying, I need a break. And I think something you brought up, Jeremy, is the learn at home piece, which is which is additional burden for the teachers on the normal day. And I think that is that was played in here as well. Any other questions for me that I can try to answer? Uh, I'm glad you got teachers stepping forward, really. We will continue to reach out to teachers. Like I said, we have a few that have applied from out of district. We interviewed a couple last week. Um, you know, we think they'll fit great in certain spots. So, um, message out there. All right. Thanks, 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 I don't know how to end this all of a sudden. I've used this before and I was like, oh. Yeah. Excellent program. Thank you. That was the shortest pop quiz I've ever had. Sorry. <laughs> I'll make it longer next time. <laughs> Moving on to our consent agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I would once again just like to thank the retiring teachers, um, especially Ms. Drivers. Um, maybe people don't realize this, but he is our second high school band teacher since like 1956 or seven or something. Right. We had two of them in 60 Leo years. Yorty and, and Wayne. So it's just, uh, he will be missed as well as the other teachers that are retiring. I agree. Moving on to our financials. There we go. Boy, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Financial. Would you like to say that? Motion to approve. I'll second. A couple of things. Um, the food service fund uh, looks a little high. That's actually a few months for February end. I'm you know, receiving the bills. A um, couple of things in the uh, bills. There's one for 276,000 for SHI International. Those were for one-to-one -one devices that we purchased um, using Paris funds. Helpful. Uh, also, innovative uh, office solutions. There's a uh, $269,210. That was 50% uh, uh, And then also, Right below that one, there's one for roadside developers. For those that don't know, that's Bisbee's. Just point that out to you. Um, several of those coming through since they're doing our IAQ project this summer at Park Center. Any questions for it? Good. 
that is approved. I think we voted on the wrong item. I made the motion. Thanks, I have a Yep. I just want to point out um, on that second page where it shows a breakdown of the different funds. Um, our general fund actually is doing um, okay. We're a little ahead of budget. So um, there's about a $200,000 deficit right now with the budget. For years, um, that's a good, good sign. And then there's some other things like food service. We're down on revenue, but we're also down on expenditures. So, look good. Any questions? Board form, board members. Anybody have anything to bring up? Administrator. Hey, good to be with you guys tonight. Um, first thing on my report, I just want to highlight a project we've been um, having some conversations around this year as we've talked about expanding our CTE programming. Um, one of the conversations we've been having is possibility of expanding programming and looking at some alternative locations, maybe to do some of those, those things within. Um, uh, thinking about a, a potential CTE center, I'll do a more formal presentation um, probably at the next board meeting about that, but thinking about moving welding CNA to a more centralized location for that. And um, possibly bringing courses like automotive courses to that um, location as well. And then thinking about construction trades, um, electrical plumbing. About knowing that there's a lot of need in the community for, for these uh, different occupations in a direction that, as we've been working towards that um, goal from the strategic plan, we really feel it would be valuable for our students. So, okay, that's a, something we've had a lot of time and conversation around as part of that. CPE project this year and look forward to more of a formal presentation next week about, about that project. Um, also at the admin team meeting recently, and it's going to be an ongoing conversation, we started thinking about um, next year and what that's going to look like, knowing that COVID has really thrown us for a loop this year, thinking next year what happens with what we brought in, um, looking at safety protocols, pieces near pod that Amanda just shared. That's one of the pieces we purchased this year specific because of COVID. Um, pretty cool tool. It's got a lot of things that maybe we can do going forward and find, identifying those pieces that you think can change the way um, we do business to better meet needs of kids and what things were in place for the COVID we maybe don't need in the future. So um, some really good conversation taking place there thinking about that. The other piece that um, is a big part of that right now is thinking about that um, distance learning. Bill mentioned that earlier. Um, we have Learn at Home going on this year. Not sure what the state's going to require next year in that regard. And then that, so. What are some ways we can meet needs of those families as well for next year? Conversation is just getting started there. Um, going on early childhood, uh, Tiffany shared that on April 1st, the early childhood staff started a professional development series called Conscious Discipline, the trauma-informed evidence-based program that focuses on social, social emotional learning and classroom management. So that's a project they're pretty excited about and some sessions coming up with that. Also shares a week of the young child um, celebration of early learning, young children, the teachers, families, and communities. So with our um, early childhood ECFE program Facebook page, families are going to be able to connect and do some things because we're not bringing pe the people in yet to the schools, but they're going to have things like Music Monday, Tasty Tuesday, Work Together Wednesday, that sort of thing. So celebrating week of the young child. Um, Darcy shared something kind of exciting. Last year, we weren't able to have concerts because of COVID, and that's really a highlight for a lot of our little kids having their, their big spring concert. Um, Mrs. Stubbery, Paula Stubbery has been working really hard to create the first ever spring concert where everyone gets a front row seat. So they, she has a room set up with green screen around the whole thing that's going to be a green screen pre-recorded concert. The kids all get to put this together. I know having a kid from Park said I'm hearing about this at home, but we're looking to bring to that. 
that link will come out to parents in the near future and this concert will take place this year. And that don't have to worry about social distancing. Uh, West side um, and a few of the buildings talked about MCAs. We are um, in testing season right now. So he talks about students taking the MCA um, assessments. Um, first time last year, we didn't take them because we had, there was a waiver the state didn't have to administer them. This year, that waiver um, was not an option. The federal government wasn't, wasn't allowing that. So everyone's testing West side means a lot of kids are all the kids. Um, our tech team um, has done a lot of work to make sure that that testing has gone very smoothly. And all the buildings really reported that's been, it's been going well so far. Amanda's serving as our DAC this year. And then a very nice job organizing that for the district. Uh, here that they had their order PBAS celebration. So they, Westside's done these celebrations for a number of years. Um, really wanted to get back to something a little more exciting for the kids with that get them together. So they actually had um, the MHS Beats group come in and do an outdoor performance for the kids. So they lined up around the parking lot and had a Beats performance that was fun for the kids recently. The school, the student council is raising money for the Marshall Food Shelf. Every dollar raised is matched with $20 of food. Um, so students have some grade level competitions and stuff taking place there. So thanks to Sam Downing and Rachel Hansen for work and leadership in that. That project's been fun for the middle school kids. Um, eighth grade also recently wrapped up assessments with the MCIS program. Um, it's a precursor to the careers class in high school, so looking at what they're going to do in the future. The possible career field would be a good fit, so it's been a fun project for the eighth grade class. High school, Brian had a lot of a lot of updates in his um, report this month, but one of the big things that I'm getting questions about I wanted to share is um, those big end of the year events at the high school, um, some updates with those things. So prom, actually this weekend, High school has done a really nice job coming up with a creative, some creative options to hold that um, that prom as normal as possible for kids this year, make it a memorable event. Um, they work to accommodate COVID-19 protocols and guidelines. Uh, this year there will be a grand march, a magician. They've scheduled dueling pianos, and then after prom entertainment, where they keep kids in small groups and rotate them around. Thanks. A lot of local businesses have donated um, product, money, and resources to help make, make that event possible and a special event for the kids. So they will have after prom. There will be after prom. Yes. Um, graduation is a, a big event of each year. I'm still working on that one. Just some ideas being tossed around with that and how to how to make that um, make that happen as normal as possible. So ideas that are that we're looking at reduced capacity event in the gym. So a traditional ceremony with fewer fewer spectators basically is one of the options. Um, individualized event like we had last year is certainly an option, but something we'd rather not do. Um, if we can have something a more typical, um, we've talked about multiple reduced capacity events. So doing um, fewer kids at a time and running the ceremony twice, so they can have um, more spectators because we're limited number of people in the in the gym. Um, or an outdoor event is something we've talked about. Would it be possible? Worry about some of the extra protocols. Um, still holding off on a final decision on that. Watching what the COVID numbers are doing. And we don't want to confuse families if we make a decision else and then have to change it later. So, I go and get to something we're not ready to make a formal. Uh, Pegger, uh, the foundation scholarship banquet. Pride and Pegger always has the scholarships and they do the nice banquet every year. Last week we met uh, with Krista Biela, the executive director for Pegger, and talked about formats to have that um, banquet, knowing that that's really important. Um, due to the limited indoor capacity, again, um, looking at multiple alternatives for that event, similar to the graduation that we had, um, possibly, you know, one of the ideas was do we have just kids at the event? Um, do we limit the number of tickets for the event? Do we multiple multiple events, multiple locations, or look for a larger one? No decision that one yet either, but um, looking at that, it has been scheduled. No, I don't have a scheduled date for that yet. Convocations, um, the other one that's a big one for the kids at the high school. Um, it's an annual end of the year event, students 9 through 12, um, where they're recognized for outstanding academic achievements, and that one will take place as well, but again, it will look a little bit different. But um, as much as possible, we're going to hold those events this year. They're just going to look a little different than how we have. Maytech, Amanda shared in her report that Maytech has recently helped support kids against hunger, um, making, they were packing food that will be sent to Haiti to support families in need. Um, she also shared about targeted services, and she just shared that. Um, the about the summer summer piece of that the kind of exciting thing I think she had a picture in her report of this one too they had a painting party at Parkside recently um, Heather Sorovi is a teacher that she taught art for a while of course in middle school and she's teaching at Parkside this year and she did a painting party with the kids which they had a lot of fun at that project um, also she um, 
um, Amanda highlighted some projects in the classroom. Um, we know that our May Tech students tend to have a lot of success with really hands-on work. Um, she highlighted some projects that where they tied art into po poetry and creative writing and some storytelling projects that the public speaking classes do. Next week, for the first time in the year, Marshall High School Theater hosted a live high school music program. So that was fun, some things that took place. Um, end of March, we had 40 percussionists on stage for the Beats um, Beats show that was aired on local <laughs> people on Tiger TV. And on Monday, the 29th, the high school jazz band and jazz choir held their annual jazz concert. It's usually pop, popcorn and jazz. This year it was just jazz. But we were at the concert, so that was that was fun. Um, Big South Conference recently announced all conference teams for multiple winter activities. Students for that are selected um, for all conference honors by qualifying through performance criteria, such as speech or gymnastics, or being voted on an all conference selection by conference coaches. Um, and then attached to the board notes, there's a list of the students that qualified for that. But, um, check out that listing. Say congratulations to all of our, our winners, our uh, people, students recognized on those all conference teams. Special Ed, Jackie highlighted a number of changes taking place in our special ed staffing this year. Um, looking at next year with that, a lot of those changes are related to um, number of students we're providing services for, but also the um, moves with going to Southview and transition with early childhood department places. And um, we're working through those and we're getting close to wrapping all those up. In Beth's report, she talked about the last two family engagement events for our multilingual families. They've been scheduled. Um, this weekend, actually, I think it's this coming Sunday, there's a soccer clinic where the SMSU and high school <coughs> soccer teams will be um, putting that on for our students at Mackey Field. And the final event will be Morning at the Movies. They've done that event now for a couple of years. So Saturday, May 22nd, um, we've rented the Marshall Six Movie Theater and our multilingual families will be excited to come watch a, watch a movie. Um, other things kind of exciting taking place with, um, again, with the EL group. Um, during, throughout the month of April, they're doing a one school, one book project. That's a project where we purchase books and the family bring them home and everyone reads the same section every night and there's some follow up questions. Bring the one and only Ivan with all the EL families. Yeah, that's me. <clears throat> Good things. Um, we received the uh, certificate of excellence in financial reporting again. Um, that was for the year of. Uh, Fiscal year 2020. The work that the district office provides every year. Special thanks. Plus, they, uh, they put uh, together. Um, there's a copy of this you're going to get. And then I uh, wanted to just uh, say a special thanks to all of our custodians across the district. Um, they continue to do their regular jobs in addition to all. Um, are now words of COVID cleaning, sanitizing, <clears throat> come through our office, I think, three times a day to wipe down the handles and our light switches and everything. Um, just a spectacular regular job that they're doing uh, the rest of the day. I just pointed out United Way gave uh, March Public Schools uh, Spirit of Caring Award, um, it's an award that is presented for both corporate and employee contributions. And, um, they just pointed out how nice of a job we did, even with the pandemic going on with the, uh, with the amount of contributions. And I just pointed out a few things with construction. Um, for this report, I just laid out kind of our schedule. Um, these are estimated that provide, you know, people uh, the exact date. But um, <laughs> windows are, uh, should be completed. Um, pretty soon, we've got the gym ones to do yet, and then the two large ones uh, in the media center and the cafeteria. Those two will be done uh, probably towards May, early June, just because they've got things. Metal panels, <coughs> excuse me, should be going up in the commons area, um, the learning commons area, for the end in the next couple of weeks, for the end of April. So that'll be pretty exciting to see those go up. And then the other area to the end of May. Bricks should be completed um, pretty soon now uh, on the north side of the gym. Um, all the bricks should be done towards the end of April. And they plan to do an acid wash, a uh, final clean on the brick towards the early to mid May, depending on the weather. Things should be starting up again. Um, we're going to be starting on the north side 
and working around the building. Um, area A, which is the, the learning commons area. Sheetrock is completed. Painting is completed. The um, ceramic tile uh, should be completed towards the end of April. Case work has been installed. Um, I think the first floor is pretty close to it in the learning <coughs> Longer is some of those things come up. The carpet, MCT, marker boards, uh, those should be starting up for the fifth of May, early June. Second floor, the sheetrock is completed. Uh, painting will be completed for the end of April. They've started painting up there. Uh, there are the, the grids and the ceramic tile will start to be installed mid April. A little bit early. Uh, and hardware will start to be installed in late April. Casework um, they've started to install, but that will be completed towards mid May. Um, they are planning in the next couple of weeks starting on the bathroom floor tiles. Uh, the group will be seen. On the outside of the bathroom is uh, done. Uh, the grouting up for the tub. Uh, which is the administrative area. Um, sheet of clock should be completed within the next few weeks. Uh, we'll start painting that in early April or early May, and then uh, case work to be called. Gym walls, we should start seeing those getting painted in the next couple of weeks. Equipment out of the, the gym area. Um, looking for that to be done towards the early to mid May. Uh, because the uh, gym one floors are hopefully going to start to be installed towards the end of uh, May, early June. Traffic should be installed then after the walls are painted, the traffic should be put up uh, towards the next week. Um, in the kitchen, the kitchen hood was installed, which is really nice. Sorry, that work will begin in May, towards late May with the Last meeting we had on Wednesday, we still had a substantial completion date of July 19th. Very good. Any other questions? At the high school, they've been doing prom and grand march on the front of the board. The grand march starts at 6 30 p.m. and all the fun activities for prom. Um, Honor Society and Winslow applications for 2021 and 2022 will be accepted. Also, for high school, there is going to be conferences. Four to four conferences held tomorrow on the 20th. Uh, West Bank has conferences on the 6th, and Maytag has the same uh, And conferences are tomorrow as well. Thank you. Now on to our discussion items. The first reading of policies 420, 425, and 427. Any questions? No major changes in the Under action items, authorization for administration to enter into negotiations with Noga, Noga, Park State here. Motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. To share our last meeting, I had shared that the daycare task force had been reviewing opportunities for a long term viable solution. Um, the ask was to maintain the daycare spots in Marshall or currently at Marshall of Child Care. Um, the task force has been meeting. We explored a number of different um, options, including restructuring the revenue and expenses, um, partnering with community services, uh, corporate financial support was looked at in privatization. Um, really appreciate the work that was put in by the task force. I'll call out Scott Marquardt and Jessica Bayer from the Selfless Initiative Foundation and First Children's Finance. They were um, really Scott led that task force um, conversations looking at that. And they are here tonight if you guys have questions for them as, as we move through this, um, this piece. Um, we did get a proposal from Canoga Park for the daycare. Canoga Park currently operates two other daycare centers in Marshall. Um, their management has prepared a proposal where they would take over operation of the, of the daycare center. 
Uh, the proposal keeps the daycare spots open and the center open. Um, we would work with them for a seamless transition with that location. The proposal would include them subleasing that 3,605 square feet that's currently our daycare center. Um, they would also have use of the outdoor play center. Um, they've offered $1,000 a month in the proposal for that space. They also offered to purchase the existing furniture and equipment um, from us. And we've got a list that we've produced for that. Um, we're looking at a July 1st transition date um, with the considerations that we know they need to relicense um, under their name. Uh, so, so they really independently operate, operate that. They have to um, identify staff for the center and they have to take their enrollment. So we're looking at the current family who certainly have the opportunity to transition to the Canoga Park um, Center and the current staff remain our employees. So we want to look through some of those pieces with them um, as they as they get that done. We feel like trans July 1st is a reasonable transition. Um, what I'm asking tonight after discussion is we're asking the board to authorize for us to enter negotiations with Canoga Park formally to sublease that daycare space that they would purchase the equipment and operate independently from our public school. Very good. Any further discussion? So we're just authorizing negotiation and we'll have to come back later to approve the agreement. Can we bring the contract forward next time? Uh, we want to get an agreement for the formal negotiations. Yeah. I think this was great. We get to keep the case serving the community. Good work. Any other comments, questions? I think it's two pluses. We keep the daycare and we also reduce our annual debt by at least 50000 a year. So plus for us as well. Win win. I'll call for a vote, please. <laughs> It is approved. On our next action item, approval of the health insurance bid and insurer provider. Motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Open discussion. Um, so every two years, we have to uh, ask about for our fee on our health insurance. This year, um, and we worked with NIS National Insurance Service. Um, we started in January to send out uh, the proposals and the process was completed in April. We had six companies um, that came through with bids this year, uh, which was great. We usually average about three. Um, very competitive bids. Um, we got anywhere from uh, I think the highest, well, heat was kind of hard to, because it had to do with the enrollment and dependence. But um, they were from a 5% increase all the way down to an 8% increase. And that's the main meeting last week <clears throat> in which they uh, all went with the uh, voted to go with NIS's recommendation. Change to Blue Cross. But we're actually currently with Blue Cross Blue Shield in Minnesota. Going direct to the Cross Blue Shield, the seller, and providers, those types of things, everything should be pretty seamless. Changing is um, our wellness is uh, the incentive that the co op provides. Most of that will go back to the employees themselves. <laughs> Which will be greater than what they received for the for the moment. Not just those that participate. So, along with that, and we're not dedicated to the second year with Blue Cross Blue Shield, but they did provide if we do stay with them in year two, it'd be a seven percent. Here's most we'd be looking at. Would you, would you recommend a two year contract? <laughs> we don't have to. And that's the nice thing about it, though, is we don't. It's 2021. The next year, we're at 7%, but as we analyze it, uh, which we've done in the past before and don't agree, we can go on 7%. Very good. Any other questions?
approval of the managed print service vendor. Every second. I'll second. Discussion. Uh, so our contract um, with Planet Supply uh, was uh, expiring this year. We have the option to extend it five more years. Actually, we have the option to extend it one year up to five years. A presented an agreement for five years that would be an average of about 1% increase each year, um, which is phenomenal to begin with, but then they also are providing new printers and devices at Southview and with the plan um, to consolidate some of our devices at the middle school, which will ultimately save us money um, also, and then There and she gets this to it. So, the yeah, package that uh, was heavily involved in this decision, too. Um, one of the things is actually a decrease in our black and white copies and a slight increase in all the copies, which um, very good questions. They provide excellent service. I mean, if we have an issue, we call and they're there. Other questions, comments? Hearing none, please vote. <coughs> Is approved. Members, we're adjourned.